The first night in the dark, cold barrack of the Alamo was the hardest. Adina Yadizabala had no better even a chair to sleep on. Rats skittered nearby. The electricity and telephone lines had been cut. But years of effort, of obsession, had led her to this desperate stand. It was February 1908, and the oldest building in the Alamo complex in San Antonio was in danger of being raised. She had locked herself inside as the sheriff waited at the door with a court order. The barrack was a two-story building of a Catholic mission that, centuries earlier, had been home to priests and nuns during the time of Spanish rule over Texas. By the time the Zavala occupied the former convento, there was little trace of its past. The historic building had been owned by a grocery company and had housed crates of milk, sugar and other goods. Now, the place was barren and musty. Without food or drink available, she was left to find the coziest spot on the floor. Word spread quickly in San Antonio and beyond. The morning after De Zavala's one woman standoff began, journalists and supporters jockeyed to speak to her through the door. She didn't emerge for three days. The Alamo is one of the most iconic images in Texas, the site had an average of 1.7 million visitors per year before the coronavirus pandemic. More than 70 years after Mexican soldiers overran Texas rebels at the Alamo in 1836, the site became the subject of another battle, how to commemorate its history. It was waged in large part by De Zavala, the granddaughter of a Mexican man who was the first vice president of the Republic of Texas, a school teacher and author, one of the first preservationists in the country and, by many accounts, a sharp-tongued firebrand, yet De Zavala's complicated identity as a Tejana, or Texan of Mexican descent, was her driver in saving the Alamo and its storied history. If it were not for her, we probably wouldn't even have an Alamo today, said Sharon Skrobarsk, treasurer general of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. De Zavala was born in Harris County, Texas, in 1861. She was the oldest of six children of Augustine and Julia de Zavala. Her father was a Confederate soldier and later worked as a ship clocker.